Energy chance of survival dropping. My confidence in him was misplaced. Differences in individual performance are hard to predict. That is how you would speak of one who pledged loyalty and would die for you? You are a most contemptible wretch indeed. You still say such things after all that you've seen. There is no concept of loyalty within Scorpium. We are a group within the greater Scorpium network, with myself occupying the top position of Sovereign. Nothing more or less. Incompatible. The term Sovereign is entirely incompatible with the Scorpion we understand. Had things been different, you would have been my father-in-law. It is unfortunate that this is how your life ended. But... I will avenge you. This is evolution. The greatest evolution in the cosmos! The everlasting prosperity of the Pangalactic Federation begins now, under my rule! We will never let that happen! Remington Kurtzman, your misguided ambitions end here and now! Make yourself weak. That look suits you, you know. Really shows off the colors of rock that infest the Federation. Burgold will soon become a member of the senseless cause. The day when you will come to understand the glory of my appearance is not far. I will never permit that to happen. You'll have to do more than be with service. This is... Yeah, there's no doubt about it. How could this be? Why is this here? Is there something wrong? It looks just like it. Just like in the ancient coil in Nilbeth, where we excavated the Levitas ore. Now that you mention it... Detecting incoming attack. Initiate emergency measures. What? Poldor! Do you not find it simply wondrous, Leticia, my child? Each time I experience the vastness of the Scorpium network, I am reminded of how small I once was. The Centralists are not the entirety of Scorpium. We soon will be, and so His Excellency, our Sovereign, seeks the Simba Drive. See for yourselves, Boldor. Are these the ones who oppose our centralist cause? Indeed they are, Your Excellency. Admiral Remington! A familiar face, 
one of Bennett's, and a descendant of the Kinneys. What drives you to do this? You violated Federation regulations, used military assets for personal purposes, and furthermore, concealed the existence of Scorpium itself and the situation at Veer. You will face retribution for your actions under Federation law. We do this for the Pangalactic Federation, for universal peace and prosperity. Surely a Kenny would understand. Don't be ridiculous! Ronix J. Kenny once interacted with the people of Planet Rook, set foot on the Forbidden Planet Styx, and led us to victory in our conflict with the Planet Farkas. <sighs> Claude C. Kenny violated your precious pact, planting the seeds of the Planet Expel joining the Federation. As a result, our studies of Symbometrics expanded greatly. Yes, but... It was much the same when your ancestor, Captain Emerson, found Gravitic Engine technology. <sighs> History has proven that the law must be broken at times to move worlds forward. And at this moment, that role falls upon my shoulders. What authority does a Kenny have to try and stop me? I... I... I'm... Don't listen to this ass, Mariel. He's just trying to manipulate you. Oh, really? The reason for Mariel's ancestors breaking the rules was because following them would have led to the deaths of lots of innocent people. Don't lump them in with a dumbass trying to steal other people's stuff for his own selfish gain. A Vergoldian defending the crimes of the most esteemed family in the Federation. Now this is rich. Those crimes were defined by the Federation on its own terms. Your rules don't mean shit to those of us on the outside. Ray, I'm okay now. Thank you. What you say is true. My family's track record as soldiers of the Federation was perhaps never the most praiseworthy. And my distaste for my family's legacy is precisely why I swore to myself that I would uphold Federation law to the letter during my career. But I will not abide by words from you. Childish logic. Excusing your own actions because someone else did it? Have you no shame? A Kenny through and through, huh? Your Excellency, it would appear reaching a consensus with these fools through discourse and the physical realm is futile. What shall we do? They serve no purpose in the expansion of the Federation or the evolution of the Scorpion. Any who would keep the Simbo Drive from us are undeserving of mercy. Baldur, just what do you think you are doing? Did you come all this way simply to be used by this petty man? <laughs> Is that not as it should be, Leticia, my child? You wish to stop me, yes? Then is it not to your benefit that your foe be small and weak? My actions are all for the benefit of Scorpium and the Centralists. Fight me! Truth be told, it's not been long since the Scorpium Network was approved. Thus, I would like to ask that you all join me celebrating my coronation with your submission. Baldor, dispatch of these witnesses. It shall be done, Your Excellency. Insufficient power. Chains of survival. 
It appears my confidence in him was misplaced. Differences in individual performance are hard to predict. That is how you would speak of one who pledged loyalty and would die for you? You are a most contemptible wretch indeed. You still say such things after all that you've seen. There is no concept of loyalty within Scorpion. We are a group within the Greater Scorpium Network, with myself occupying the top position of Sovereign. Nothing more or less. Incompatible. The term Sovereign is entirely incompatible with the Scorpium we understand. Had things been different, you would have been my father-in-law. It is unfortunate that this is how your life ended. But... I will avenge you. This is evolution. The greatest evolution in the cosmos. The everlasting prosperity of the Pan-Galactic Federation begins now under my rule. We will never let that happen. Remington Kurtzman, your misguided ambitions end here and now. They need me for this. That look suits you, you know. It really shows off the colors of rock that infest me. It's the Federation. For gold will soon become a member of the Centralist cause. The day when you will come to understand the glory of my appearance is not far. I will never permit that to happen. You'll have to do more than pay lip service to your ideals. Chance 
survival dropping. I'll beat you to a pulp! Victory 
is in sight.
Action Outfit. Sovereign! The Sovereign of Scorpium! Destined to unite the galaxy! My morals! My beliefs! No! Uh, impossible! What will become of the Federation uh, of Scorpium's evolution without me? Both the Federation and Scorpium are going to be much better off with you out of the picture. Damn it all! I only integrated to build a utopia! A union between Scorpium and the Federation! Boldor! <gasps> Boldor! He lives yet! Nina! Maester Midas! The way he is, I don't think... Even if possible, his Scorpion body can't be repaired here. There's nothing we can do. But... <laughs> Summon the fleet to Verkness! This is far from over! I must lead Scorpion and the Federation! <laughs> Unfortunately, it appears that your time is at an end. Your Excellency. <coughs> what? <laughs> Did you truly believe a fool such as you would be appointed sovereign? 
You have been nothing more than a stepping stone to prepare the network for the true sovereign. That is the consensus of our network. <laughs> Baldor, what did you just... Felling me, or Remington will not halt Scorpion. Oh, we're definitely gonna stop your invasion of Vergold. We'll speak to those Scorpion that have faculty of speech and enforce Federation regulations. This kind of Scorpion lawlessness will not be allowed in the galaxy any longer. If the conceptual sovereign individual vanishes, in time, Scorpium will be restored to our correct state. <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct. You understand nothing. Neither you nor Remington know what is true, what is Correct in this life. Baldor! Baldor! Is he truly dead this time? We can confirm that the individual named Baldor is deceased. Remington's biological activity has also ceased. I would assess that we have stopped the centralist insurrection for the time being. Small comfort. After everything... It could not have been your wish... ...to fall so far from home. Baldor... ...all this suffering... ...to what end? The invaders just gave themselves up at fleet headquarters. I don't know. It's all a little too suspicious, if you ask me. Might have expected this much from Scorpium. From how I see it, with their sovereign gone, their network is probably reverted back to putting everyone on an equal level again. Is that how they work? <laughs> yeah, I have my doubts about the surrender, that's for damn sure. Do not assume the deeds of Remington's faction, representative of Scorpium as a whole. But, I too must acknowledge the faults and dangers within the Scorpium quest for further and further integration. The risks must not be overlooked. I'd say the Pan-Galactic Federation is more to blame for these centralists. Do tell. Coaxing in brand new members with all this talk of peace and the advance of civilization. That, uh, sound familiar? At least Scorpium keep a certain amount of equality among themselves. But the more the Federation grows, the more the Upper Brass consolidate their power. This whole ordeal with Remington and the Centralists was just the worst parts of both brought together. I'll admit, I find it hard to refute that. The Federation has no choice now but to take a good long look in the mirror and figure out how to piece itself back together. What's going to happen to all the officers who turn themselves in? They could very well claim they had no choice but to comply with Remington's orders after integrating with Scorpium, which might actually grant them immunity from Vergaldian law. I don't expect the local system government's got a damn idea what the Scorpium even are. Gonna have a hell of a time trying to talk peace. I'm quite aware. I expect to be made responsible for bringing an end to the situation. Which is why your son's data is so crucial. I'm hoping I can count on your assistance. The future of both Vergold and the Federation depend on it. Just be sure there's something in this for me, huh? I got a business to run, you know? Duly noted. Captain Raymond, thank you once again. Your efforts have allowed the Federation a chance to correct its course. <laughs> None of what we've done was for the Federation's sake. Well, be that as it may, 
The Federation skirted a full and devastating collapse thanks to your efforts. Lieutenant Mariel, I have looked at the Scorpium data you provided. I was surprised by your confrontation with the Virian soldiers who crash-landed on the planet. Aster 4 is an underdeveloped planet, is it not? Yes, sir. About that. You were doing what you thought was right, correct? Upholding what were once core values of the Federation, lost under Remington's lead. Yes, sir. But I believe that it should not excuse me from Federation law, though. I knowingly violated the UP-3. For that, and for the illegal seizure of the merchant vessel Akizuki, I should be brought to trial. Well, I can't argue with that. W wait Those of us in positions of power can never let the ends justify the means, regardless of the outcome. But still... That said, the Federation's in no shape to court-martial you right now. I'll take full responsibility for your deeds until a more appropriate time presents itself. You stay here with your friends. Uh. All things considered, Lieutenant Mariel, I think you made the best calls you could. Your actions don't tarnish your family name. Far from it. Making as much known should serve you well when the time comes to face the jury. Admiral. Don't you leave us now, you hear? The Federation is in bad enough shape as it is. We don't need to lose another talent like yourself. Sir! And I expect there'll be talk of making Aster IV a Federation protectorate in the near future. You should expect to have some eyes on you as a member of the planet's royal line. What is this protectorate of which you speak? I can explain it all to you later. I'll also discuss whether the Federation even retains the capabilities to do so. So, what will the rest of you do next? Well, the Centralists have been busted up, my home world's safe and sound again, and Bulldor's gone. Right. Y yes And with the whole of it now behind us... Seems like our journey's at its end. Time for our princess to make her triumphant return. Head back to the Aldis first.
Calling the Aldis. Requesting transfer. Roger that. Better head for the bridge you first. To be like this. Somebody could have gotten really hurt. So, I guess we're setting a course back for Aster 4 then, that right? Yep. If you would. By the way, you should know that Vergoldian Interstellar sent out a warning. Some of Remington's fleet haven't surrendered to Admiral Maverick yet. They report some scattered pockets of resistance. So a straight course for Aster is out. Yeah, might be smarter to take the scenic route this time. You know the drill. Better to be safe than sorry. Right. So we'll steer clear of the usual routes and see if we can find some safer detours then. A most prudent choice. It would do us no harm to linger longer among the stars, yes? Pull us out of orbit at a quarter thrust and set course for Aster. Last leg of our journey. Let's make it a good one. Copy that, Captain. Exiting orbital trajectory at a quarter thrust. T minus 30 to Aster 4. Picking up nothing unusual on our path. <sighs> Seems like this might be easy sailing for a change. Hey, bro. Hmm? If you got anything to get off your chest, now's your chance. We don't have much time left. Yeah, probably right. I have something to ask you. Yes? Could the Fulga be made to sail the starry ocean above? Nah, not likely. Why not? Well, it doesn't have the thrust to pull out of the planet's gravity well. And, I mean, it's got an open deck, you know? And a crew manning an open deck is unwise? That'd be a hard yes. There's no air up there for him. You mean, the air we breathe? Uh, uh, oh. Right. I probably never explained the whole vacuum of space thing, huh? Say no more. Your point is made. We lack the understanding to match what is common sense to you. An awareness of that fact alone will suffice. I thought myself accomplished in my research. Alas, even I am bested. It shall be much time yet until we may hail our companions across the stars well here's to hoping I can last the wait hey what's with the long face all of a sudden contemplating of our return the centralists are no more and Boldor may have fallen but that leaves not all well yeah, true. We know not how Boldor's absence will be taken. Once it becomes known, he will not return. There is much yet to consider. You know, I'm glad you didn't go changing on us. Even with all that's happened. Changed I have. Is that right? I have made many friends and braved many obstacles. And seen countless worlds far, far beyond my own. Albert, I think Osirius and Vale are in good hands with you around. I could ask for no more. Should I even ask? I'm musing over the Scorpion. Musing? I've come across a wealth of experiences I'd never dreamed of since taking to the stars. There is much I wish to convey to Melthea and Marcus upon our return. 
But my voluminous words will never truly convey to them the smell in the air aboard this vessel, nor the texture and tastes of our journey. I can't explain the sensation of my weight on the surface of strange planets for the first time. I guess not, huh? We humans are social creatures. At our root, we live through and thanks to our connections with others. That set me thinking. The Scorpions seek to guide evolution, and they share their society's wisdom with all who join them. Perhaps they forge the path that all humanoids must one day inevitably tread. Maybe so, but I think it's a path we need to tread slowly, questioning every step along the way. I needn't be reminded, but the matter itself is now known to me. It has taken root and will occupy my mind for the rest of my days. And what wonderful days they will be. You are a real complicated dude sometimes. You know that? If I wasn't, then I would no longer be me, correct? Yep, I'll leave you to your business. Okay, can you be straight with me on something? What's this now? Admiral Maverick gave his spiel and all, but what's the Fed really got planned for Aster for? Well, under regular circumstances, a planet such as Aster 4 would be flagged as a protector at the moment a figure of importance, like Leticia, makes contact with a high-ranking Federation officer. And with ours? Ray, what do you think would be best? Currently? <laughs> the Feds can't tell anyone else what to do. Right. Especially now, since Aster 4 has made official contact with Planet for Gold, too. Should the Federation try to muscle in and force anything here, it would only aggravate whatever fragile relation they have with for Gold now. So, for that reason and more, it's on hold. On hold? Yes, just floating in the air. Between us and Leticia, I think we can force the Federation to cool down its urges for a while. True enough. Oh, now, Space Cadet, you seem out of it. Well, these past few days have been one thing after another, and it all just happened so fast. And now going back home, it feels like it was a dream. Yeah, I feel that. It's really hard to believe it's all coming to an end, huh? When we first took off, I thought, if I studied hard enough and traveled among the stars like Elena, I can become just like her. But our worlds are just so... Well... They're worlds apart. I'm just sad, I guess. I've realized how little I know and how much I've yet to learn. You are really something, Nina. Why? I feel like whether or not Aster 4 makes it as a developed spacefaring world... Depends a lot on just that sort of mentality. Uh, what do you mean? Only what I said. Nothing more, nothing less. Future wise lady. Hey! I was being serious here! Hey, sorry for the, uh, major detour. That is no issue. Scorpion stands to merit, from any observation, of the universe's many civilizations. 
Uh, observing is fine and all, but don't you go turning into the next sovereign. You hear me? Uh, the possibility had not crossed my mind. Though, now it has. Not funny, man. My apologies, but there is no cause for concern. When I myself was integrated, and when my home planet came in contact with the Scorpio, I encountered numerous varied and conflicting opinions. These experiences taught me to always remain aware, both of who I am as my singular self and how others may perceive me. And those experiences are all shared on the network, so all is good, yeah? Correct. A very astute observation. Eh, I mean, we've been at this for a while now. You will make a fine addition to the Scorpion, Captain Raymond. <laughs> a lifetime away from now, maybe. These chats are enough for me. Our time together draws to an end. All journeys reach an end. Doesn't mean it's the end, though. Right? Indeed. I can assure you, we don't want to lose contact with any of you after today. Uh, speaking of the future, though, what exactly do you plan to do now, Duma? You were meant to assess the people of Vergold for Scorpion compatibility, yes? I am contemplating the endeavor to normalize Scorpion integration. Normalize Scorpion integration? Should I take that to mean moving away from invasive assimilation to focus on what were your prior methods then? You are correct, though we expect that alone will be insufficient. Contact with the Pan-Galactic Federation served as a catalyst in the Scorpion Schism. However, it is now obviously apparent that Scorpion ideology has always been susceptible to such dangers. It was always at risk of taking a more aggressive route then? Indisputable. Armed with that information, we must learn from our failures and seek out new methods by which to further our evolution. This perspective should be shared with the network. Sounds a lot better than the Centralists, that's for sure. But how's one little probe supposed to influence the whole network? Astute observation. I am but an investigative life form, unable to intervene in non-mission critical duties. Yet, little Duma, you did just that by aiding us on our journey, did you not? It was your actions that prompted me to do so. What actions? Your efforts to rescue the android Elena from the crash site at Galka Shrine triggered my protocols. Had you acted differently, my investigation directive would have persisted. Communication between us would have remained at minimum levels. In past surveys of worlds co-inhabited by organic and non-organic lifeforms, Use of non-organics as tools by organic life forms has been quite typical. However, you treat Elena's life as equal to your own, sparing no thought to her nature. In your interactions, I detected new possibilities for future coexistence. My aid was offered in an effort to further investigate future options suggested by your actions. Additionally, influenced by the interactions they witnessed between Raymond and Elena, Leticia and the people of Aster IV naturally accepted the android as an equal being, working alongside Elena as they would any other fellow humanoid. This is an astounding occurrence, 
and serves as proof that such a symbiotic relationship can spread. My actions may have breached my role as an investigative unit, but I am grateful to all of you. That's all just common sense for Vergaldians. Likewise, it seemed only natural for us. The greatest hope for the future of Scorpion is in finding more who share such a mentality. And you will strive to foster such thought. Is that right? Correct. Perhaps you have already experienced some form of personal evolution yourself, then. Personal evolution? Yeah. <laughs> I don't doubt it, little Duma. You've been through way too much not to be left a little wiser for it. You know, I'd say this whole adventure taught us all a thing or two. Indeed. Well then, I shall make my way to the bridge. Mm-hmm. I'll catch up later. <laughs>